Welcome to worship. A special welcome to those worshiping at home, online, and to those gathered here in the sanctuary. We do encourage you to like and share the live stream of this service on your social media pages as a way of inviting friends and neighbors to be part of our worshiping community. But let us prepare our hearts and minds with a moment of silence. I invite you to stand as you are able for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sins. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. O God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sun and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us, and by your hand, protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from Job, the 38th chapter. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what, what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed bounds for it and set bars and doors and said, thus far shall you come and no farther and here shall your proud waves be stopped. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry that as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, 
holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying, and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children, open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as Jesus was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And the disciples woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Jesus woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. Jesus said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, why don't we start with a story this morning? There was a man, a husband, who wanted a boat more than anything else. Now, his wife kept refusing to grant her husband's wish, but this husband, he went ahead and he bought a boat anyway. I'll tell you what the husband told his wife. In the spirit of compromise, why don't you name the boat? So being a good sport, the wife accepted, and when her husband went to check the dock, went out to the dock to take the boat for its maiden voyage, this is the name he saw printed on the side of the boat. For sale. <laughs> well, the setting for today's gospel story is in a boat. You likely know this story well. If not from hearing it in the church, you know the story because you have lived through it. You've lived through the scripture story. Now, to recap the gospel lesson, the disciples and Jesus are out in a fishing boat in the middle of the sea. There are other boats around them. Jesus is resting in the stern of the boat on a cushion, Mark tells us, when a huge storm pops up and threatens to overwhelm the boat and its passengers. Afraid, literally afraid for their lives, the disciples look to Jesus only to discover he's still sleeping on the cushion in the stern. Jesus is sleeping through the terrifying storm. He's sleeping when the disciples need him the most. After the disciples wake Jesus up from his nap, 
Jesus immediately rebukes the wind and the sea with the words, Peace, be still. And the storm immediately stops, and all is calm. And after rebuking the storm, listen to what Jesus says to the disciples. Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? At the heart of this story, for me, is a series of questions. The questions for me are, where is God when we are afraid? Where is Jesus when we need him the most? How does God help us through our fears? Martin Luther the 16th century German reformer made this interesting observation in one of his table talks. God and the devil take opposite tactics in regard to fear. The Lord first allows us to become afraid that he might relieve our fears and comfort us. The devil, on the other hand, first makes us feel secure in our pride and in our sin, that we might later be overwhelmed with fear and despair. As I reread this gospel story a few times, the nail biting, you know, eyebrow raising part of the gospel story for me is, is the time between when the storm breaks out and starts and the disciples' fear erupts and the time it takes to get Jesus to wake up from the nap and come to their rescue. That in-between time is where I feel the tension. I mean, think about it. We don't really know how much time passed between the disciples' fear starting and Jesus rescuing them from the, their fear. It could have been just a few moments. It could have been an hour. It could have been more. How long did it take for Jesus to rescue them. That in-between time, I think that's where we sometimes live. We live in the in-between. We are aware of various storms around us and perhaps within us. Storms that threaten our stability. Storms that will change the shape and content of our lives. Storms that endanger our very existence and the well-being of those we love. We know all too well what it's like to face storms. We know what it's like to be afraid and try to rouse God to rescue us. You've been caught in the storms of life before. I've been in the storms of life before. We know this gospel story. We've lived through it. And we believe that Jesus is in the boat with us, that he's going through the storm with us. But we struggle, don't we, when it feels as if Jesus is sleeping on the job. We may go so far as to wonder if Jesus even really cares that the waters are overwhelming us. We understand the disciples' frustration with Jesus. I mean, have you ever thought, Jesus, I've prayed and prayed. I'm worshiping. I'm trusting in you. I really am. I'm serving in the church. I'm giving my offerings, but nothing. The bills keep piling up. The debt collector is still calling the cancer, it just keeps coming back and back. My kid is still off squandering her gifts. The depression is taking control of my life. The caregiving isn't getting any easier. Why won't you rescue me, Jesus, from the storms in my life? It's an honest question. It's even a biblical one. Job asked it. King David 
asked it over and over again in the Psalms. Wouldn't it be something, I mean really, wouldn't it be something if, if God just always got up quickly and rebuked the storms in our lives when we lifted up a prayer, putting an almost immediate end to their realities? What if God always, I mean always, chose to quiet the storms of life? Some time ago, a mentor of mine said this to me, Sometimes, Anne, God calms the storm, but most of the time the storm is going to rage on and on. And so what does God do? God calms you. God calms us even when the storm is raging on. I've thought a lot about those words. How much would I prefer if God would remove, say, the storm of cancer or the storms in marriages or the hurricane of violence in our world, the downpours of grief and anxiety? But sometimes God works not by rebuking the storm, but by calming us to get through the storm and giving us the ability to hand over our fears to him. The truth is, Jesus worked a miracle for the disciples that day by stilling the storm with his powerful, almighty word. There are times when Jesus works miracles in our own lives in very much the same way. As a pastor, I've seen Jesus still storms in marriages and in families. I've witnessed Jesus at work in hospital rooms through doctors and nurses and prayer as he rebuked illnesses in surprising ways. I've watched calm, pure calm, fall over a chaotic, volatile meeting when Jesus was invited to come into it and shepherd it. But I've also, perhaps more often in my experience, stood right in the in-between time. You know, the time between that storm popping up in someone's life and it finally dying out. I know some of you are standing in the in-between right now, distrusting that Jesus is with you and going to see you through the storm. Most of the time it takes more time than we would like. Even though we know Jesus is with us in the boat, that he's facing the storms with us, it's hard to keep our trust in Jesus and to remember that he's ultimately in control. In trusting Jesus, even in the face of these storms, we, we can release our fears and embrace faith in the one who does have the power to command the winds and the waves. And I'm here to remind you that you can trust Jesus. Because the gospel, the gospel shows us that God in Christ Jesus is out in the deep end with us. He's not sitting on the side of the pool watching us struggle in the deep end. Jesus has descended to the depths for us. He's with us in the storms that we face. He's able to calm them because he's conquered the storm of death for us on the cross. There's a story about a child who had to walk every day after school past a dark, really spooky house. Now, some adults were trying to encourage this young child. One adult handed him a good luck charm to ward off any ghosts that the child perceived to be around. Another adult had a light put on the corner where the spooky house was located. Still another said to the child, stop being afraid, there's nothing to fear. Then an adult walked up and said with compassion, 
Child, I know what it's like to be afraid. I'll meet you here every day, and I'll walk with you past the spooky house. That adult, he did nothing to remove the fear, to say it wasn't real. Instead, he chose to bear it with the child, to take the fear from the child's shoulders and place it on his own. The cross of Jesus proclaims that God has placed our storms on his shoulders, that he's promised to walk with us day by day through them. Our God is not intimidated by the powers of this world, the power of sin, of death, of evil, or anything that opposes God's love. Our God chooses to come into those realities, realities that rage on and on and on like a mighty storm, and transform us with his peace. Sometimes the reality is that the storm doesn't end, at least not on this side of things. Sometimes the storm seems to win the day. In the words of the great Lutheran hymn, A Mighty Fortress, even if the storms were to take our house, goods, honor, child, or spouse, Though life be wrenched away, they cannot win the day. The kingdom is ours forever. In faith, whatever amount of it we've been given, whatever amount you possess, we trust that no harm can destroy the new life given to us in Christ Jesus. No storm can rob us of God's promises. Jesus is in control. While he sometimes commands the storms to stop, other times he chooses to ride them out with us. In faith, we trust in the power and the authority of Christ Jesus, the one who the winds and the sea obey. We trust in him because he's faced the storms for us on the cross. Even the greatest storm of all, of death, was no match for our God. Jesus destroyed it. Jesus stilled death's sting and quieted death's thunderous clap forever, forever, with his dying and his rising to new life. There is no reason to fear. Jesus is in the boat with you. Have faith. Trust him. And be encouraged by these words from the prophet Isaiah. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Do not fear, for I am with you.
As we prepare for the prayers of intercession, you are invited to share prayer requests and thanksgivings in the comments section of the live stream. Please do remember that your comments are visible to the public. Our prayer team and pastors will pray regularly over your prayer request and add them to the prayer list of the congregation. At this time, I invite you to stand as you are able. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. Holy God, you gather your people from east and west, north and south. We pray for the mission of the church throughout the world, that your steadfast love may be known to all peoples. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You laid the foundations of the earth, and the waters are the womb of creation. The morning stars sing your name, and all creation shouts for joy. We pray for your blessed creation, that it may continue to flourish and magnify your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You keep watch over all the nations. We pray for countries experiencing violence, hunger, and unrest. Guide worldwide and local community organizations in their efforts to establish safety and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are close to the brokenhearted and near to those in distress. We pray for those who are experiencing oppression. Liberate us from the systems and chains that bind us. Remove the barriers that separate us from one another. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You dwell with us in this faith community. We pray for our leaders and elders. Grant them knowledge, patience, and kindness that through their leadership you may be exalted in this assembly. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Your love endures in all situations. On this Father's Day, we pray for those who, who are fathers or wish to be fathers for those with broken or strained relationships, for those who are missing their fathers, and for fathers who have lost their children. Bless and strengthen them, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us ourselves, our time, and our possessions, which are signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself to us, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share signs of God's peace from our pews with one another. Receive the sending blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
peace. You are the body of Christ. Yeah. Mm-hmm.